Hi, podcast peeps. Welcome to another episode of the Age Groupies podcast, part of the United Broadcast Network. I'm Lindsay Hyken, and along with my co-host, Mike Ergo, I'm here to talk to you about all things related to endurance sports from an amateur athlete perspective, about living that multi-sport lifestyle, and to share the other random thoughts that pop into our heads. You can follow the show on Instagram at Age Groupies, join our Age Groupies page on Facebook, and look us up by name, Lindsay Hyken and Mike Ergo on Strava. If you have questions, comments, or topic ideas, feel free to email us at agegroupies at gmail.com. And if you enjoy the show, please leave a rating and review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast. So today is another solo episode for me and no guest today. Mike uh, is traveling and we actually were trying to do a joint episode for you guys, but um, there was some some technical difficulties. So we weren't able to do that. So I'm going to do a quick solo episode on burnout. I'm sure that many of you have experienced this or know someone who has. So I'm going to talk a little bit about my personal experience with it, what it is in case you don't know, and then some ways that you can address it, especially since we are heading into off season. Now is a great time to address burnout. So here are my thoughts on burnout. Okay, so today I thought I would talk a little bit about uh, exercise burnout. Um, I'm sure that most of you, if not all of you listening to this, have experienced some form of burnout um, from overtraining and from maybe setting your sights on a big event and feeling a little bit overwhelmed after finishing that goal. Uh, so that was my experience with Ironman Santa Rosa that I just did this year, uh, May of 2019. I had wanted to do Ironman for a long time, as I had shared with you guys in previous episodes. So completing the full Ironman was a huge accomplishment for me. And I'm very, very happy I did it. And, um, and it was a very proud moment for me. And I was really looking forward to the high level of fitness that I would have after, uh, the race. Um, I knew going in that I had some knee issues and my doctor had told me I was going to have to take some time off from cycling and running, but I could swim and do strength. And I thought, you know, I'll be able to maintain some of that fitness. And, and, and then the summer is going to be super fun because I'm going to be really fit and I will have done this big goal. So I'm going to be energized by it. And, uh, that's not what happened. Um, what happened, So the day after Ironman, so during Ironman, (laughs) I was like, I'm glad I'm doing this because I'm never going to do this again. And then uh, that's what I said to my coach right after I was done. Um, I was like, yay, you can check that one off. Um, And the next day I woke up and I was like, oh, I'm definitely gonna have to do this again. And I was thinking, you know, I want to try to do it with, uh, you know, maybe with a tri bike because I was riding a regular road bike and do it with my knees or you know, healthy, et cetera, et cetera, and see if I could do a better time. Um, and then maybe three days after Ironman, I got super sick. I had a really bad cold that turned into like a sinus infection and chest congestion thing that ended up having me on antibiotics and it wasn't responding to the antibiotics. And I ended up being on various meds for probably about 21 days or so. Um, and just incredibly sick and dizzy and just miserable. I just spent a bunch of time laying on the couch after. So not even swimming, not even doing some gentle yoga, nothing. And I was so disappointed in, in that, but I'm also kind of not surprised because I do know myself and I, I've got a history of getting sick after finishing a big accomplishment, like finished my MBA, very sick, you know, finish Ironman, very sick. So I wasn't totally surprised, but I was kind of bummed about it. Um, and when I finally recovered from that, I thought, okay, now I'm going to jump right back, you know, and start working out and I've got other goals in mind and et cetera, et cetera. And I could not get myself to want to do anything. And to be honest, we're now uh, towards the end of September and I have not trained consistently since Ironman. Now that's not to say I haven't worked out. I've worked out most days since I've been, um, you know, health, since I got healthy again, since I got over that sickness. So say, uh, end of June, um, forward. I've worked out most days, um, but it could be just a strength workout, just a spin, just a hike. Uh, my knee issues have not cleared up, unfortunately, and cycling has been, um, 
sort of the bane of my existence all summer. I did a little bit. I managed to get through the only other race I had this year, and I actually felt fine on it, but had a, a kind of a relapse the week after. Um, and so I've just noticed, you know, that I really depleted myself reaching for that goal. And I wouldn't change a thing. I wouldn't not do it. But I've had to change my mindset around it because I'm experiencing a a, um, pretty hefty (laughs) case of uh, exercise burnout. So, of course, I Googled it just to see kind of, you know, what it said on the Internet about what exercise burnout is. And, um, you know, number one, decreased performance. Definitely experienced that. Uh, Knee issues aside, I just have not had the ability to pick up the pace on anything, not on the swim, not on the, definitely not on the ride. I'm not even riding now, but not on the run. Um, I've just been sort of just trotting along. That's the best I can do. And, um, along with that decreased, you know, pace, I still am, you know, feeling fatigue and an elevated heart rate and all of the signs of actually pushing myself, but I'm very clearly not pushing myself. Like if I look at my Garmin or my Strava, it's like, I'm barely moving. And I, and I I feel like I'm, you know, hitting the wall. So there's that. Um, Number two is uh, disinterest in exercise. And I've definitely, this is a significant decrease in motivation um, or enjoyment of the activity could be a sign of burnout. And uh, I wouldn't say that I've had uh, disinterest in exercise in general, but I've definitely had a reduced interest in doing, um, all of the things that got me to Ironman. So I have not gotten into the pool con- with the exception of running. So I haven't gotten in the pool consistently. Um, I haven't been riding because of my knees, but even if my knees were feeling good, I have to tell you, not, I don't really have any interest in getting on the bike. Um, trail running is my true love. And so, even faced with burnout, I still want to get out there. Um, but like I said, I can't run very fast. Knees aside, even on when my knees are feeling good, I don't have it, but I, I, I still have an interest in it. But I have also seen a little bit of an interest in um, doing other things like strength. So I'm t- trying different types of exercise, uh, which seems to be helping. So I wouldn't say an overall disinterest in exercise, but definitely a disinterest in, um, you know, the three disciplines that got me to Ironman. And this is really... You know, for me, um, I look at my teammates that, that did Ironman with me, my teammates on Team Sheeper, and I would say the bulk of them got right back on it immediately. They just were at the Saturday ride the next week. They're at track practice. They're doing all the stuff. Like they just right back on it. In fact, a couple of them have done Ironmans or half Ironmans since Ironman Santa Rosa. And they've done really well and they're super fit and they're having fun and um, I'm really happy for them. I just cannot, uh, I'm just not in that space right now. And, you know, I definitely have a little bit of compare and despair happening (laughs) when I see them because I want to be that person who's like fit and um, just moving on to my next thing and and ready to roll. Um, So I do try to, you know, like let some of that go. Um, and focus on just, you know, that I'm happy for them, that they are having the fitness and they do have the will and the energy to focus, um, continue to focus on multi-sport. Um, but I, I can see a real difference in my experience post Ironman to theirs. Um, mood changes. So this is something that I experienced pretty significantly. I'm a basically a happy go lucky person for the most part. And, um, I kind of went into a deep depression after Iron Man. And I think there were a couple things going on. Nothing, some that don't have anything to do with exercise. Uh, just the time of life I am, I'm, I'm in as a woman. Uh, but there's, you know, there's a component of reaching a big goal like that and then being done with it. It's like, well, what, who am I now? What am I doing? But along with feeling sick, you know, when my, my cold started clearing up, I was still left just sitting on the couch and, I felt, um, super exhausted and, um, normal things that would bring, bring me pleasure. Um, I was sort of neutral about emotionally and I just really had lost my mojo. Um, so I've taken some steps to, uh, regain that getting, I've increased my sleep schedule. So I'm allowing myself to nap. I'm getting, going to bed earlier and getting up later and not, you know, giving myself crap for it. Um, I've talked to my doctor and we're taking some medical steps to change, you know, cause I've got some chemical stuff going on. Um, 
And, you know, I'm, I'm working on it, but I, I was so surprised because I thought, you know, I guess prior to Ironman, I thought, you know, when I reach this big goal, it's going to be like the biggest goal of my life. How amazing is that going to feel? And how long am I going to ride that wave of like, just being so stoked? And the answer was like, uh, you know, 48 hours or something, <laughs> which was a little bit shorter than I'd hoped for. Um, let's see, what else does it say about burnout? So delayed recovery time, elevated resting heart rate, fatigue, insomnia, um, diminished appetite, fat gain, weakened, a weakened immune system. Those are all, um, signs that you're experiencing burnout. I, I can say that I can relate to, um, the elevated resting heart rate, the delayed recovery time, fatigue. I already mentioned that. Uh, I haven't had as much insomnia. Like I said, I could just sleep all the time. So I was more like on the depression side where I just want to stay in bed. Um, fat gain. Uh, I don't know if I've had, I guess I had some of that earlier this year related to changes in my body. And I've shared that with you guys. So I don't think I've had that as a result of, um, of exercise burnout, but I have experienced that this year, the weakened immune system I already talked about. Of course I got sick. Uh, the one thing I did not experience at all is a diminished appetite. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I had the the reverse. I just was like laying on the couch eating everything. So that was definitely not my experience. But if you are experiencing any of these things that I've just talked about, you may consider that you have, um, you know, that your training schedule might have been a little bit too much for you. You might be ex- just experiencing a little bit of burnout. Um, and so what can we do? Um, well, you know, so there's two ways to look at this. You could look at ways to avoid exercise burnout. And when I've, when I Googled this, of course, a lot of the information that came up were like, how can you avoid exercise burnout? I don't know if that's really an important thing for us as endurance athletes to discuss in terms of avoidance, because I feel like we're not the kind of people that are going to avoid the pain. We're going to run headlong into it. So, you know, my goal isn't really to avoid burnout. My goal is to just acknowledge when I have it And then how do I recover from it? Because I'm going to, you know, based on what I want to do for myself, based on my goals, I'm probably going to have burnout. If you're doing multi-sport and you're doing half Ironman distance or longer, or you're doing long trail runs or whatever, you know, any um, sort of longer endurance activity uh, with focused training over the course of a year, you're going to probably experience some level of burnout. And so, uh, we could all agree just to not even try to avoid it. (laughs) I think that's probably the better idea, but just say, okay, well, once I do have it, um, maybe, you know, the, the, the better practice is to just acknowledge it and then go, okay, well, what can I do about it? And so, um, some of the information I thought was, was helpful. And I've kind of mentioned this is to change things up. And so now we're heading into, of course, the end of triathlon season for this year. And this winter is a great time to do different things and to just sort of let it all go and not be worried about maintaining fitness in any one of the three disciplines. Um, I tend to normally like to run more in the winter because of course it's raining and trail running is my favorite thing to do. And, um, but I also like to roll in a lot of swims because my team has, has, um, swim, uh, we've got a bunch of like swim challenges in team swim challenges. So I don't completely give up the fitness, but I definitely change the way that I'm doing it. I might do a double swim or on a Saturday instead of riding at all, or I might do swim workouts. I don't really like, like an all fly workout or something like that. Um, might do some more power hiking or go on trails that I um, hadn't been on before to try to do a little exploring. Um, But this year on top of doing this normal things that I do in terms of just like doing a little more adventure style um, within my own sport, um, I'm also adding in different things. So I am trying something (laughs) that I just, I started trying it a few weeks ago, which is to just do like a 30 minute, uh, high intensity strength workout. I would like to do initially, I was like, I'm going to do this every day, but of course that's just me setting, um, you know, goals that are ridiculous that I can't really attain. So my goal to do is to do it like 
three to four times a week. And this is through, um, I'm using the daily burn app. I mean, there's a bunch of different apps out there that you can get a fairly cheap membership, you know, under $20 and they have all these streaming, um, like workouts and some of them require equipment. Some of them don't with the daily burn. You can, um, actually choose workouts that have no equipment or just use a yoga mat or whatever, or ones that actually require you have dumbbells and things like that. Um, but it's just a 30 minute quickie and it's something that I would never normally do. I don't like doing strength stuff. I don't really, I know that I, it's good for me. And I think I've shared before that's not something I really enjoy, but I'm just trying something different and I'm letting it be, it could be part of a workout for the day. So I've done some where I've gone for a run and then done this and then it could work. It just be like, that's the only thing I'm doing today, 30 minutes, which is like in my mind, nothing, but, um, but it's different. It's completely different. And at first, when I first started doing it, I was like, oh my gosh, this is really ridiculous because, you know, they're kind of like in a studio and they're like, all right, let's go. And they've got kind of cheesy music and they're like, whip, whip, you know, and I just was like, this reminded me of back in the day when I was in, in, um, college and I taught step aerobics and I thought, oh my God, let's just get out my, my, um, my leotard and leg warmers. But the truth is it's actually helping me with my burnout because it's completely different. It has nothing to do with, you know, riding, running, or swimming, except that it's going to actually improve those things. And I've, I've noticed even getting into the pool, um, that I haven't been swimming regularly, but I've been doing strength regular regularly for the last few weeks. And I actually feel stronger in the pool than I have for a while. So that was an interesting, um, side benefit. So I'm just trying different stuff. And this app has a bunch of different types of workout. They have quote unquote yoga, but it's with bar um, dumbbells. They've got like a Tabata thing going on. So, you know, I really am um, encouraging you this winter to just try different things just to, you know, let it all go and not worry about that, that multi-sport fitness. Um, one of the other things that said was to set realistic goals um, to avoid burnout. I don't think that, um, well, we've already discussed we're not going to try to avoid burnout. So I don't know that setting realistic goals is even really all that necessary for us. Because what's realistic? I mean, we all know that um, we can do more than we initially think that we can. And so I'm not sure what realistic or unrealistic is for an endurance athlete. But I will say about the goal setting is that what I've learned this year with Ironman is that it's totally awesome to have a stretch goal. And I think I encourage everybody to have a a goal that scares you that you're not sure if you can do and just go for it. And it may take you a couple of tries. I mean, I had to do third time was a charm was for me to finish Ironman, but to acknowledge that it may take longer than you want. You may have to try at it a little bit, a few more times than you really would like to, um, that your experience is going to be different than those around you who are doing this seemingly the same goal. It's like their experience of that event is going to be completely different than yours in the lead up and in the, during the event and in the, the after time too. And then to be gentle with yourself after you have accomplished the goal, um, because you might need more time to recover than you, than you wanted. Um, so that leads us into the next, little, uh, tip for, um, addressing exercise burnout, which is to make time for recovery. Um, you know, basically, and I, Mike and I've talked about this before. A lot of the gains are made in the recovery. So doing a good workout and then letting your body heal from it is actually where you're going to get the gain in fitness. And so, you know, I encourage you to give extra rest days during the winter. I know sometimes when we have, a you know, we have a training plan and we've got, uh, a system in place to get to our goal. Um, we may not get as much, um, rest as maybe, you know, ideally our body would want, but during the off season, it's time to really lean into that. So instead of doing a Saturday long ride, maybe you do a shorter ride that ends, you know, at the bakery with your friends and you rest a little bit and you just spin the legs out and you don't really get an elevated heart rate and you don't really sweat a whole whole bunch. You don't really push it and you just kind of get out there and enjoy the sunshine and the fresh air instead of, you know, trying to uh, maintain wattage or something like that. So this is a really good time, you know, October, November, December to just try something different, 
and then take an extra rest day every week. So maybe instead of doing one rest day or no rest day, do two a week or something like that. doesn't mean you have to like do nothing in those days, but do something easy. Like, have you ever tried yin yoga, for example? Like that would be a good time to do on a rest day. And then um, let's see, what else does it say online? Oh, you know, love what you do, which we all do. I don't think that that's an issue for anyone listening to this podcast. We all love doing what we do. At least I hope you do. Otherwise, stop doing it. (laughs) If you don't love doing endurance sports, stop because there's really no need to. Um, Listen to your body, of course. We all know that, although I don't know how, how great us endurance athletes are at listening to our body. I think partially it's because part of endurance sports is to continue to do the thing when your body is hurting. So to continue to run when it hurts, to continue to push the pedals when your legs are exhausted, you know, exhausted. So there is a line though, between pushing yourself in training and actually listening to what your body's saying. If you're experiencing an elevated heart rate, when you're resting, you need to take extra rest days because it's not healthy and it's not really going to help you reach your goals at the end of the day. Like getting one more ride logged on Strava isn't really going to serve you in the long run. And so that is kind of the, I think, I think for us endurance athletes, that is the real, like, I don't know, that's the stretching for us mentally is to listen to our bodies. I think it's easy for all of us to get out there and push too much for the most part. Um, so, Oh, here's a good one. And I kind of talked about it already. Um, it said to avoid burnout, focus on all aspects of fitness. So that's just bringing it back to what I was talking about with doing strength to not just only do, you know, a lopsided, uh, form of training where it's like all endurance based, um, which is what I kind of tend to, but, Uh, I do notice when I mix in other things, whether it's yoga or strength, I am um, overall healthier and I am less burned out because I kind of miss getting in the pool. So when I get in the pool, I'm happy to be there instead of just like, oh my God, I got to swim another day. Um, It's funny. Some of the, uh, some of the suggestions online for avoiding burnout are, are clearly not written for people who are (laughs) endurance junkies, like keep track of your training. It's telling us that if we keep track of our training, then we can note the intensity and maybe back off a little bit. And I was like, we're all on every data thing ever. and It's not helping us not burn out. So we're going to skip that one for us. Um, and then eat and sleep well. Uh, I know that my last December, we were at my, my coach Tim's house for like a holiday party. And he gave us a big talk on listening to our bodies. Um, really focusing on our, our nutrition and, and sleeping. And he'd said that he completely, um, changed the way he was doing things and that he was really focused on getting enough sleep. And that's something that I had mentioned, I think earlier today that I'm, you know, I'm also focusing on. It's interesting because all I have to do is cut out some Netflix time and I have an extra hour I could sleep but there's a component of guilt for me sleeping that is, does not exist with streaming, you know, binging Netflix. And it's bizarre because neither one of those activities, well, that's not true. I was going to say neither one of those are high, you know, high performance activities that, and that's not even entirely true. Like there is value. I mean, I'm not knocking Netflix. I love to watch, watch shows, but there's more value in getting sleep than there is in streaming um, a show And yet I feel guilty for sleeping like I'm not being productive, but I don't know that watching a a show is productive. So I don't know why that is the way it is, but I'm working on allowing myself to go to sleep earlier and get up later. Uh, There's something in my head that says I have to be up by a certain time in order to be, I don't know, a good person, good athlete, good whatever. And, um, you know, I'm not sleep. I mean, when I say sleep in, I'm talking like seven 30 or seven, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, yeah. I think my body needs it. It's really seemed to need it after Ironman. And I, I used to always need eight hours of sleep and that was it. And since Ironman, I've needed like nine, you guys, and I still can do a nap. It's kind of crazy, but, um, I'm just, I'm, you know, prioritizing it and it seems to be helping. And then nutrition, we all know good nutrition is the key. I've talked to a couple different people on this podcast previously, nutritionists and um, about, 
you know, how important that is. And in the burnout phase, if you're in a burnout phase, you know, giving your body things that it can use to rebuild um, and repair is super, super important. Um, yeah, I think that's it. I'm trying to think of anything else I need to say about burnout. Uh, hmm. I think, uh, one other thing I'll just mention that's important, at least for me, is to not take any of this too seriously. Like, um, it's cool to set goals and have races and a race schedule and pursue that. And I think it's awesome. And I love, as you guys know, I love it. Otherwise I wouldn't do a whole podcast about the, the topic, but, um, the like negative self image that I got from feeling burned out after Iron Man was so, um, intense and also so unnecessary, you know, who cares? Like if I have to lay around, oh, okay. I mean, I, I need to keep my sport and my love of the sport in perspective. It is, you know, at the end of the day, it's a lifestyle, but it's also really just a hobby. And if I spend six to eight weeks not doing it, no one is going to (laughs) die. You know what I mean? And so I really, you know, in, in July and August, I thought, okay, this is, I want to get it back. And I was so freaked out about like not having my fitness. And at some point I just realized like, this is so silly. Like who even cares? Like, it's fine. I can go hike and I can go, you know, swim when I feel like it and do yoga when I feel like it and whatever. And it's fine. And I can get the fitness back. You know, it always comes and goes. I've experienced that before. You know, I've been injured before and then had to make a full comeback and I've done that. So like, whatever, it's all good. Okay. Enough ranting from me about that. I, Mike should be back uh, with me next week. And I hope that you guys have a great week and enjoyed this little podcast on exercise burnout. See you next time. All righty. That concludes today's episode of the Age Groupies podcast with me, Lindsay Hyken, and my co-host, Mike Ergo. We really hope you enjoyed it. You can follow the show on Instagram at Age Groupies, join our Age Groupies page on Facebook, and look us up by name, Lindsay Hyken and Mike Ergo on Strava. If you have questions, comments, or topic ideas, feel free to email us at agegroupies at gmail.com. If you enjoy the show, please leave a rating and review on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast, as this really helps us get more exposure while we try to grow this little venture. And of course, if you have friends you think might like the show, please be sure to share it with them. But for now, thanks for listening, and we will talk to you next week. Bye.